Hey everyone, in this video I'm going to show how to deploy a fast API app and database to AWS Elastic Beanstalk and RDS. The app itself is going to be based on the code from the video on setting up fast API with Postgres. I'll leave a link for that in the description or you can click the link in the top right. To manage the infrastructure, I'm going to be using Pulumi to keep the infrastructure in code. I've used Terraform more in the past, but I really like the idea of sticking to Python when defining my infrastructure rather than YAML, so I wanted to give it a try. I've taken a copy of the code from the database video, and I'm just going to move it into an app folder now. And I've already got the AWS and Pulumi CLIs installed with the credential set up. If you need to do this, I'll leave some links in the description. Now I'm going to make some changes to the existing code. First, we need to rename the main.py file to application.py. By default, Elastic Beanstalk will look for an application.py file instead. You can modify the file and path it looks for, but I find it simpler to stick with their conventions whenever it isn't a problem. And I'm going to move that file to the root of the app folder. Now it's moved, I'm just going to update the imports. Since things aren't running locally, I'm going to use an environment variable for the database connection string. So in the database file, I'm going to import OS. And I'm going to use this to retrieve a connection string env variable. If the environment variable isn't found, it will default to the Docker connection I set up in the previous video. Another issue is going to be running the migrations, as I won't be on the same machine as the deployed code is this time. There are a number of ways this can be done, but for simplicity, I'm going to have the migration happen on startup. This isn't a good idea and should be replaced with your preferred method, but it simplifies things for the purpose of this video. My preferred approach is to apply the migration as part of a deployment pipeline, which I'll cover in a later video. So in the renamed application file, I'm going to update the imports. I'm bringing in OS for the connection string end variable and I'm importing config and command from Alembic. Then I'm going to use these to apply any outstanding migrations. Here I'm getting the Alembic config file, updating the connection string and applying the migrations. Again, not a fantastic idea, but it won't impact deployment, which is the point of this video. The last thing to do to the code for the project is to create a proc file. Elastic Beanstalk will use this to get the command to run the app. It will notice the presence of the proc file and will look for a web command. I've supplied the web command and told it to run our app with UVCon. Now that's done, let's move on to the infrastructure. I'm going to create an infrastructure folder to live alongside the app folder. And then in the terminal, I'm going to use the Pulumi CLI to create a new project. It asks a few basic questions about the project. I'll give it a more appropriate name. And I'll change the region to my closest one. The others are left as the default answers. This will scaffold up a new project using Python targeting AWS. This creates several different files for us. The Pulumi YAML file describes some basics about our project. It has the name we gave during creation, it has VM down to be used as the virtual end for the project, and the description for our project. We also have a YAML file for each stack we've defined. We've only created a dev stack, so let's take a look at that. This just contains the config specific to this stack. Right now that's just the default region for the project. More will be added to this later on. And finally, there's the main file. This is the one we really care about, as it's what will be run to deploy our infrastructure and where our resources are defined. The basic scaffolding comes with an S3 bucket, so we'll get rid of that first. And I'll make a minor change to the imports to make things easy to reference and to bring in the JSON package. Now we can start adding the infrastructure we want for this project. 
we're going to deploy our app to Elastic Beanstalk along with the Postgres database. Since the app will require a connection string that depends on the database instance, let's create the database first. Here we're defining an RDS instance and setting some standard properties on it. The allocated storage shows that I'm giving it 10 gigabytes of storage. The engine is set as Postgres, as that's the type of database I want, and the version is 13.1, which is the latest version available as I'm doing this video. I've set the instance class to T3 Micro as I'm tight, and that's the cheapest type of instance available. Perfectly acceptable for a test project or an utter failure of a production app. Name is, funnily enough, the name of the database it will create on the instance, and I've given it a very complex and secure password. I've set skip final snapshot to true because I don't want it to take a snapshot before I delete the database. And finally, I've set the username for the database to Postgres. You can change any of these as needed to suit your purposes. Now we can define our Elastic Beanstalk app. This consists of two parts. First, you have an app, which is your project, and then you have an environment. So for example, you could have a dev environment, a QA environment, a production environment, etc. So we'll start by creating the app. Here, I'm just defining an Elastic Beanstalk application with the name FastAPI-App and giving it a basic description, nothing fancy. Next, we can define the environment. Here we define the environment with a given name. We supply the application by name, referencing the app we just created above. The solution stack is the runtime we want to use for Elastic Beanstalk, and for this I've taken the latest version of Python available when I recorded this video. Finally is the settings, of which I've given just one for the proxy server to use. There are two available, Apache or Nginx. If you don't supply this value, it will default to Nginx. I've gone with the Apache because that works out of the box with Uvicon, whereas Nginx required some further config and I wanted to keep things simple. Unfortunately, there's more work required before this will work. First up, we need to create an instance profile for Elastic Beanstalk to be able to spin up EC2 instances. AWS provides some managed policies for Elastic Beanstalk and other services to help them perform standard operations. So we're going to make use of one of these here as well. We can do that by creating a role policy attachment, attaching the existing policy to the role we've created above. This policy gives Elastic Beanstalk access to S3, CloudWatch and X-Ray, with the S3 bucket restricted to those created by Elastic Beanstalk, or at least having that in the name. This access is useful for helping with debugging your app and allows you to pull out the logs from the created instance. Then we can apply this to the Elastic Beanstalk environment by updating the settings. The next thing to note is that an RDS instance will always be inside a virtual private cloud or VPC. This is used to restrict network access to resources. If you don't specify one, it will deploy to the default VPC for the AWS account. You can create a new VPC if you want, but for our purposes, the default one works. However, Elastic Beanstalk doesn't live inside the VPC by default, so we'll need to add that in ourselves. First, we can grab a reference to the default VPC. As mentioned, this gets the default VPC for your account. It doesn't create one. It just brings it in to be managed by Pulumi. But don't worry, you can't delete this at all, so your accidents are safe. We can then add another environment setting to the Elastic Beanstalk environment. This tells AWS that we want the environment to live inside the default VPC as we've referenced the resource and passed in its ID. Unfortunately, there's still more work to do. When you define a VPC for Elastic Beanstalk, you also have to specify the subnets you want to use. The default VPC comes with default subnets. These are public subnets across the different availability zones for your chosen region. Given Elastic Beanstalk is public facing, they'll do fine for our app, so I'll grab those to use. I'm using the EU West 2 region, as it's the one closest to me, and that has three availability zones available. So here I'm grabbing the subnet for each of these. We supply the subnets as an array of IDs in string format, so we need to use a bit of string interpolation to do that. This is what I disliked about Plumi, as you can't simply use string interpolation using outputs from a resource. Instead, you have to use an apply with a lambda function to return a value. Here, we're passing all three IDs to the all function and applying a lambda function to create our string. 
which is just a comma delimited list of IDs. Tedious. But now we have the value, we can add another set into the Elastic Beanstalk environment to provide those. We're getting closer, but there's still a problem here. While the database and application exist in the same VPC, the database doesn't allow any incoming traffic by default. So we need to create a security group for the database to allow traffic from our VPC. Here I've created a security group and given it a name VPC to RDS. The VPC ID is a reference to the previous default VPC resource we created. Then I defined an ingress rule. We want to allow TCP connections on port 5432, the default Postgres port. And I've used the CIDR block for the default VPC. This will allow incoming traffic from any resource in the VPC on the specified port. Now we can apply this security group to the database instance. You can specify multiple security groups if you choose, but ours is pretty broad, probably too broad, so we only need to provide the one ID here. The last thing we want to do is to move the username and password for the database out into the config. Separating out values into the config is a great way to make your infrastructure code reusable. For instance, you could have a T3 micro RDS instance in dev, but may want something more powerful for production, so you can split out the values and change them depending on what stack you're using. But for this example, we're just going to do the username and password so you can see how it works, and also to make the password a secret so it's not stored in our code in plain text. To do this, we can grab the config from Pulumi, and we then require the database username and the secret database password. To be able to run this, we just need to use the Pulumi CLI to set the values. This adds the two values to our config. And if we check the dev stack config, we can see that they've been added there and that the secret isn't stored in plain text. Now that we have the username and password in config, we can update the RDS instance to use those variables instead of hard coded values. Finally, since we updated the code in our project to pull in the connection string from the environment variable, we need to set that value up. Again, we need to use apply on output all as we need the output address of the RDS instance. But we also need to pass in the DB password since it's a secret. The username isn't a secret, so it can be referenced directly. Now we have the connection string, we can set it as an end variable on the Elastic Beanstalk environment. You can also export values from the infrastructure as well, such as if you need the DNS or IP address of a resource or anything like that. We can add the connection string as an export just to show that. Simply call the export function giving the value a name and providing the value itself. This will be output at the end of deployment and afterwards you can use the CLI to output a property using the stack output function. Now our app is all set up, let's run the deployment. In the terminal, we navigate to the infrastructure folder and from there we can run Pulumi up. If this is your first time running the command, you'll be prompted to log into Pulumi. That's because, by default, it uses Pulumi's cloud services to manage your state. You can change this to manage your state locally or in something like S3 or Blob Storage. It will check what it's planning to create, give us the info, and we can choose to apply or back out. I'm going to apply. This will take a few minutes to work through, so I'll fast forward through to the end. So we can see that our stack has deployed and we can see our exported variables. However, it just tells us that it's a secret. This is because the secret we set earlier has been used in the connection string. You can view an output like this using the output CLI command with the show secrets flag.
Now if we go to the AWS console in the browser and navigate to Elastic Beanstalk. We can see our deployed application and the environment we created for it. Our infrastructure is set up, but our app itself isn't deployed. Normally, like the migrations, you do this through a pipeline. I'll cover that later in another video, but for now we can do a manual deployment. To do this, we just need to create a zip of our code. We need to include the code files, the prop file and the requirements file. Because we're running the migration, we also need to include the Alembic folder and config file. Make sure application.py is at the root of the directory. And you don't need to include things like a virtual environment, make files, etc. Once you have that zipped up, you can upload and deploy it to Elastic Beanstalk. Simply select the zip you want to deploy and set a version. I'm just setting 0.1 and deploy. Just wait for this to deploy, which will just take a minute. Now it's deployed, we can test to make sure our app works. The app we have is a simple one that allows creating, retrieving and deleting some basic items, which works for our purposes. So we can copy the URL from the Elastic Beanstalk console and we can make a post request from the terminal or whatever tool you prefer to create a first item. We can see the output shows we get a 200 response, which means it's successfully created an item. If we now go to the browser and navigate to the URL, giving it a query string with an ID of 1, and we can see the item we created has been returned. Our app is deployed and working fine. The database migration has been run and everything is working. The last thing to do is to tear down our infrastructure. This is just a demo and these things aren't free. So if we go back to the terminal in our infrastructure folder, we can then use the Plumi CLI to tear down the infrastructure using the destroy command. As with spinning up the environment, this will take a while to destroy, so I'll fast forward to the end. Now it's done, and in the output we can see that all resources have been successfully destroyed. This will delete your infrastructure, but leave your stack in place. If you want to remove the stack too, you can run the Plumi stack rm command. That's the end of the video. You now have a repeatable way of deploying an environment to AWS to host your app, managing the infrastructure code in Python with Plumi. I hope this was helpful, thanks for watching.